Let's see how to write all of the terms in the expansion of a plus b raised to the power of 3 using the binomial expansions formula that we have in the upper right hand corner of the screen here. Well, the first thing we see is that the only difference between a plus b raised to the power of 3 and a plus b raised to the power of n is that I've replaced the n that we have here by 3. As a result of that, all we have to do is copy the right hand side of this formula, replacing every single n that we see by 3. So let's start with that. We can state that this equals to the sum from r equals to 0 up to 3 of the binomial coefficient 3r times a raised to the power of 3 minus r times b raised to the power of r. To be clear, all I've done here is copy the right-hand side of the formula, replacing every n that I could see by 3. The next thing I like to do is define what we call the general term of this sum, so that's everything I'm underlining in gray, as t of r, or t sub r. Defining the general term in this way allows me to state that this equals to the sum from r equals to 0 up to 3 of t sub r. To be clear, t sub r is equal to the expression that I underlined in gray. In other words, that's equal to the binomial coefficient 3r times a raised to the power of 3 minus r times b raised to the power of r. And I'll go ahead and box that and call it general term. I can now write all of the terms in this sum. Indeed, each term of the sum is obtained by replacing the r that we have here in the general term by all of the integers starting from 0 up to 3 included. So that would be t0 plus t1 plus t2 plus t3. All we have to do now is find an expression for each of these four terms. And for that, we use the general term that I boxed in green here. And in each case, we replace every single r that we see by the r value for each of the four terms. Here's what I mean. For t0, r is equal to 0. So we replace every r that we see by 0. And that would be the binomial coefficient 3, 0 times a raised to the power of 3 minus 0 times b raised to the power of 0. And that's the first term, t sub 0, taken care of. We add on to that the second term, t1, in which case r is equal to 1, so all we have to do is replace every single r that we see by 1. And that would be the binomial coefficient 3, 1, times a raised to the power of 3 minus 1, times b raised to the power of 1. And that's the second term, t sub 1, taken care of. We add on to that the third term, which is t sub 2, for which r is equal to 2. So in a similar way, we replace every single r we see by 2, which leads to the binomial coefficient 3, 2, times a raised to the power of 3 minus 2, times b raised to the power of 2. And that's t sub 2, taken care of. Finally, we add on to that the last term, that's t sub 3, in which r is equal to 3. And so in this case, we replace every single r that we see by 3, which leads to the binomial coefficient 3, 3, times a raised to the power of 3 minus 3, times b raised to the power of 3. And that's t sub 3 taken care of. At this stage, we've written all four terms in the expansion of a plus b raised to the power of 3. But we cannot stop there. We need to simplify each of these four terms as much as possible. I like to start by simplifying all the powers of a and b we have in each of the terms. And for that, a couple of results are worth keeping in mind. The first of which is, if we have a raised to the power of 0, or b raised to the power of 0, then these are both equal to 1. In other words, any a to the power of 0 or b to the power of 0 we find inside any of these terms can be completely ignored. The second result worth pointing out 
is if we have an a raised to the power of 1, then that's simply equal to a. In other words, we don't bother writing a power of 1. Similarly, if we come across a b raised to the power of 1, we'll just write that as b. Keeping these results in mind, let's go ahead and simplify these powers as much as possible. For the first term, the binomial coefficient is 3, 0. So I write that, that's 3, 0. And that multiplies a raised to the power of 3 minus 0, which is just a raised to the power of 3. In turn, that multiplies b raised to the power of 0. But as we just said, we can ignore any powers of 0 that we see. So we don't have to write anything there. We add on to that the second term, in which the binomial coefficient is 3, 1. So I write that here, that's 3, 1. And that multiplies a raised to the power of 3 minus 1. So that's a raised to the power of 2, which in turn multiplies b raised to the power of 1. And as we said previously, we simply write b to the power of 1 as b. So we have a squared times b. We add to that the third term in which the binomial coefficient is 3, 2. So we write that, that's 3, 2. And that multiplies a raised to the power of 3 minus 2, which is a raised to the power of 1. And once again, since we have a to the power of 1, we simply write that as a. So I can write a here. In turn, that multiplies b raised to the power of 2. So I can write that as well, that's b squared. Finally, we add on the fourth and final term, whose binomial coefficient is 3, 3. So I'll just write that, that's 3, 3. And that multiplies a raised to the power of 3 minus 3. So that's a to the power of 0, which we can ignore completely. In turn, that multiplies b raised to the power of 3. So I write that, that's b raised to the power of 3. And at this stage, we've simplified as much as we possibly can without calculating any of these four binomial coefficients. And to calculate these, we need to use the formula that I'm circling now in red. So let me start by making a bit of space, like so. Looking at the binomial coefficient formula, we can see that we're dealing with factorials of numbers. Now, if you haven't seen those before, here's the idea. The factorial of some integer number n is equal to the product of all of the positive integers less than or equal to n. Now, that makes it sound way more complicated than it actually is, so let me show you a couple of examples. Say we have to calculate the factorial of 4. Well, that's equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And you can go ahead and check, but that's equal to 24. Or perhaps we have to calculate the factorial of 3. Well, that's equal to 3 times 2 times 1. And again, you can go ahead and check, but that's equal to 6. And there are two results that you definitely want to make a note of. The first is factorial of 1. That's simply equal to 1. The second result you want to make a note of is factorial of 0, which is also equal to 1. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that result there. Be careful, factorial of 0 is equal to 1, not 0. Keeping these results in mind and using the formula we have here, let's go ahead and calculate this first binomial coefficient, 3, 0. Well, the binomial coefficient 3, 0 equals to factorial 3 over factorial 3 minus 0 times factorial 0. Using the fact that factorial 0 equals to 1 and 3 minus 0 equals to 3, this turns into factorial 3 over factorial 3 times 1. In turn, that's equal to 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 times 2 times 1 times 1, and we quickly see that the binomial coefficient 3, 0 is equal to 1. Done. So, in our expansion, we can now state that the first binomial coefficient is equal to 1. Let's calculate the second coefficient, 3, 1. Again, I'll do this on the right-hand side. The binomial coefficient 3, 1 equals to factorial 3 over factorial of 3 minus 1 times factorial of 1. 
Now using the fact that factorial of 1 equals to 1 and 3 minus 1 equals to 2, this equals to factorial 3 over factorial 2 times 1. That's equal to 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1 times 1. And we can see that this simplifies quite nicely. Indeed, the 2 on the numerator and the denominator cancel each other out, and we're left with 3 times 1, which is 3 on the numerator, over 1 times 1, which is just 1 on the denominator. In other words, the binomial coefficient 3, 1 is equal to 3. And that's the second coefficient done. We can add that to our expansion and state that the second coefficient 3, 1 is equal to 3. And we could carry on this way and calculate the third and fourth binomial coefficient. But rather than doing that, let me show you a couple of shortcuts that will save you lots of time in an exam room. First of all, when dealing with binomial expansions, the first and last binomial coefficients will always be equal to 1. So without even thinking, we can go right ahead and state that the binomial coefficient 3, 3 is also equal to 1. Secondly, the second binomial coefficient as we go from left to right is always equal to the second binomial coefficient as we go from right to left. And they are always equal to the power to which we raise the binomial, so in this case 3. So without even thinking, we can go right ahead and state that the binomial coefficient 3, 2 is equal to 3. And at this stage, we can write our final answer. Indeed, we can state that a plus b raised to the power of 3 is equal to 1 times a cubed, so that's just a cubed, plus 3 times a squared times b, which I'll write as 3a squared times b, plus 3 times a times b squared, so that's 3ab squared, plus 1 times b raised to the power of 3, which I'll just write b cubed. And that's our final answer. We've just written all of the terms in the expansion of a plus b raised to the power of 3 using the binomial expansions formula. And at this stage, it's worth pointing out one more important result. Notice that in our final answer, the expansion has 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. But we had raised the binomial a plus b to the power of 3. In other words, the number of terms that we have in the expansion is one more than the power to which we raise the binomial. And in fact, that will always be the case. Indeed, we can go ahead and state that if we raise a binomial a plus b to a power n, where n is an integer greater than or equal to 0, it will always have n plus 1 terms. So for instance, a plus b raised to the power of 4 will have 5 terms, or a plus b raised to the power of 7 will have 8 terms. So do make a note of that as it's often asked in exams. I'll finish by saying that the method that we used here with the general term t sub r will always work. And in fact, I use exactly the same method in our next tutorial in which we write all the terms in the expansion of a plus b raised to the power of 4. So make sure to watch that. For now though, that's it for this tutorial.